that. And so I will speak about GP goals and deformation techniques. And I have four, um, I can torture you for four hours on this topic. So today, uh, so the first lecture will be about what does it mean lifting the characteristic D rock. And so a bit like the heart of this series of lecture is to try to teach you some techniques that even if you are like me, born a complex geometer, <laughs> a debris geometer, you can still work in characteristic P by deforming and to characteristic zero and use your um, low bit complex geometry there. So, so the first the first talk I will really speak about what is lifting to characteristic zero, what does it mean, and what uh, varieties lift like to our purpose. And in two, I will make I will make a toy example. This is uh, the product of two elliptic curves, and it's uh, in here I will uh, um, illustrate an example of one on how one can use the formation technique and lifting to characteristic zero in particular in order to find, uh, uh, to answer a question about fourier mukai partner in characteristic P. And we are going to discuss fourier mukai partner of the product of two elliptic curves in characteristic P. And then, in three, I will go to the heart of this series. Uh, also, the formation. So Lipnick and Olson have given uh, a wonderful tool to us, which is a way in which one can deform the right equivalent in general, like uh, not just from characteristic P to characteristic P, but in general. And so yeah, I will speak about this, and probably uh, I will have to, to do something, uh, like I, I will not finish that in one hour, and then I will speak about application. And I will give application both in characteristic P and uh, also in the case of uh, complex, uh, complex geometry, so complex algebraic geometry. So this is a plan, and so let's start. <coughs> we are one, lifting two. So what? So K would be a perfect field. Which means that either K as uh, the characteristic of K is zero, or the is P. Greater than zero and uh, the Frobenius morphism. Uh, I should keep the same form for K. Is an automorphism. And uh, soon we will have that K is algebraically closed, but uh, the the formation techniques work. Uh, um, it is perfect. You don't need to assume. So, uh, morphism just means surjective. Mm -hmm. Because it's automatic. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. So, 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 so we are okay, a perfect field, and we have that smooth, like, smooth, projective. Okay. And what does it mean that we lift? Ah, so if K is of characteristic P greater than zero, what does it mean 
that x split in charge 0. So, okay. So, we have, so we need one a r a complete Unitarian local ring such that one the the residues field is isomorphic to our base field and the quotient field field of quotient as characteristic zero. And two, we need x sorry, r uh, morphism a uh, flat and a finite type. So we need a scheme x over spec r flat and of finite type such that so here we have spec j inside and the pullback is x. Uh, is this r a validation ring? Hmm? Is this r a validation ring or not? Yes, it's a big one. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so, so this is what it means that a variety leads to characteristic zero. So the first the first protagonist, so the best part is the ring of these vectors WK. That now I'm going, I'm not going to construct, but uh, I'm going to tell you what uh, what it is and some of its properties. So, so WK is, so WK is a complete the line such that one uh well w k over m uh is isomorphic to k and q of w k as characteristic zero and then, so well, it's complete with the another topology, and there is a map. So, sorry, but then you started with x over over small k that's projective. Yes. Do you want the, the curly x to be to be projective as well? Yes, in this, like, in order to have a nice lift. Yes, where I'm going to speak about the difference between formal lift and uh, projective lift at the end of this talk. But there you're just asking for flat and finite type. I mean, that yeah. Doesn't, doesn't already. Yeah. Okay. But so it's I, I want a variety. So this is uh, uh, the end and uh, the end goal. If I want to do something with it, I want a variety. Like it's in some case. Uh, so in how I get a lift, a variety lift and not a formal lift, I lift X together with a lampo line bundle, mm -hmm. and so I will get projectivity right away. Mm -hmm. It's possible, and this is something that Bragg and Liebling use to lift to non-projective K3s, and then you, you you get a variety, but it's it's a, it's it's really it's a, it's a complex variety, it's not a much variety. So, but. Okay, so we have the double the it has uh, characteristic zero. There is a lift of Frobenius. Uh, 
na ah, um WK WK that lift Frobenius That's making the voice. German student, don't be too upset with me. This F is not an alphamorphism. No, no, it's a, it's a morphism. It's a homomorphism. It's a homomorphism, and it's like I don't have spades there, but uh, uh, well, it's basically it's a uh, it's factor to Frobenius. Like it's uh, if you have the two make K and K, the two map to K. There is uh, uh, the, the map induced uh, on the lower, in the imaginary lower uh, row of the diagram here, it's the Frobenius. And then <coughs> there is another morphism that I have to check how it's spelled, especially because it's uh, 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 the threshing bond. There is. <laughs> D. <laughs> Sorry for my horrible pronunciation. That is called uh, someone German can pronounce it for me. There's still a C between the S and the H. No? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, since you wanted to be correct, I just wanted yeah. to. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> And it was in my note, but I'm not able to copy my note. So the Pershimbon uh, said that, um, so it's a, uh, uh, we have V composed with the Frobenius, it's equal F composed with V, and it's equal the multiplication by P. And, okay, and, and then we he satisfy a universal property. So that, that's what, what kind of map? Uh, just between the winning groups or no it's a it's a map of ring and it's called shift and since I don't think I will have time to see the to show you the construction the real construction of the wind ring. Uh, it w you will not know if you don't know already why it's called shift. Okay. How, how can it be a map of rings? I mean, because it cannot map one to one. Right? So no, it's. You're right. So, yeah. No, it's a. It's a I think it's a morphism of the, of the group. It's a, let me check. No, no, it's a, it's a portion. So the thing is, uh, it's induced by the local. So, it's, you have, let's see, okay, this, so if I have u and k into u and k, it send, yes, so, so because, well, it's p, yeah, so one goes to p, so yes, it's not a morphism, so this is, but it's, yes, and, Numbering one, two, five, six. Are you are missing some points, or is it just the <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's because complete was my number two in my note. No, no, no. It's just so, so that you don't get confused. Uh, yes, it's. Uh, I will accept. And then I should have uh, missed something else. <laughs> oh no, yes. It's uh, basically number one. Number one was uh, deep war of characteristic zero. Uh, of okay. So yes. It, oh. Sorry. <laughs> So universal, so let's be consistent. Four. So universal property is that if um, R is a complete <coughs> DVR such that the object of characteristic zero with uh, R over M K, then R contains 
does the thing. And so the introduction of the with, of the with, with ring is just because so there are now we have we have two like we have two different uh, lifting in the sense that the best lift the best lift that we can have is something over spec of this double K got that and uh, in the if this if we have a lift like that then uh, we have that uh, uh, we say that X lifts to the lift factor. Algebraic variety under many aspects. If it lifts over the lift vector, like Kodaira vanishing work, like there are a, a bunch of results that you can use uh, even if you are in characteristic and uh, don't care. Otherwise, if, uh, if X just lifts to characteristic P, so we have something like that, well, even if R could be not complete, for example, but uh, what we can do, we can uh, uh, complete it, and we, we go to the completion. And now this is complete, and so, and so it's, this R hat contains the bit vector by the universal property. So we speak of lift to a ramified extension of the bit vector. So when we have a, so when we have a lift, so not all variety lift to the bit vector, not all variety lift to characteristic zero. And when we speak of lifting, there are two degree of niceness of the lift. One is lifting to the bit vector. And the other is lift to something that is a ramified extension of the lift vector. If that can happen, that for lift variety possible, probably. Let's see. In, yes, not the, not in the case that uh, we have today. <laughs> Okay, so yes. Okay, so one important thing. So Sorry, can I ask a question about that? Complete means complete with back to the mathematical. Yes, with uh, the emadic uh, topology. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so now we know what does it mean. And. Uh, <laughs> reason we didn't draw the horizontal arrows, it might have misunderstood. Here? Yeah. What? Here? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, it's, um, it's, I was oh, okay. being quick about okay, it. So the thing is, if you have X that lifts on anything, like you don't really need to be complete there. If you have, if you have the picture with the curly X over spec R, when R is, uh, uh, any if you are with uh, with the residue with prescribed residues field and uh, uh, of characteristic zero, then what you can do is you, have, you can pass to the completion and you have a lift of x over the completion of r. So now this is uh, this is exactly the object in the universal property of the width ring. So that is a ramified extension. So if it lifts to characteristic zero. Then it leads to a ramified extension of the bit vector. So when, uh, when, uh, when you, so these are the two degrees of niceness of the lift. And 
Okay, so. Oh, and, and you're saying it's ramified because you wanted to have the same residue field. Right? Yes. Okay, so the residue field has to is yeah. fixed because. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so for this reason, like the residue field is. Thank you for the question because the residue field is important because from the next, like from tomorrow on. Uh, I will need the field to be algebraically closed, <coughs> or if it's not if it's not algebraically closed, the result that I will get is up to an extension, because uh, like in uh, I will have to take extension of the on the of the curly x, and then uh, it's a finite extension of the curly x, and this will uh, resonate in a uh, finite extension of my base field, which is it's algebraically close, it does not it does not take otherwise. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's much better. Probably I should go with the sponge. <laughs> Tell me if you become some variable and I will uh, I'll uh, submit myself to the <laughs> David device. Okay, so, so I'll. <laughs> this is completely obvious. Okay, so how the program, when you do, you're not here in the first lecture, and right? so you, you don't know what went wrong on the first day, and uh, so it, you start all over. So. Uh, how can we look? So, uh, the first thing, we have to use infinitesimal deformation theory. So, if we consider So we have, so now we have our R, that can be the width vector or whatever. So this we call Rn. We have a quotient mark like that, and these give, so these two are Artinian. And the idea, uh, let's call this. Yeah. is zero. So, so now we can use infinitesimal deformation theory to, if we have a, a lift, I will remove the spec in front of my rings if it's um, uh, not uh, necessary. So if we have a lift like that, and uh, we can produce uh, x n plus one over r n plus one. So the D is Cartesian, then we get a sequence of compatible deformation. <coughs> Which give me a formal lift. Uh, let's write formal. I saw the beginning of using a different font for this, but I have just a limited number of fonts I can install on a blackboard. So uh, let's see. So, 
So the, what I, I need to do is, if I can lift infinitesimally at every degree, then I can create a formula. Uh, I have a formula. So, okay, when can I do this? The obstruction to the form, uh, not this, but I so the obstruction to the form So R H here is a complete local room. Yes, not necessary like not necessary complete, but but then you pass to the completion and it, it doesn't matter. So and so so now, what? The, so we have a formal lift there, and so the obstruction. If we, if you have a a zero Artinian R algebras, so that they sit in a sequence like that. Then the obstruction to uh, lift <coughs> something lead to the form x zero to a into a zero lies in H2 of X of the tangent X. And when this is zero, when this is Zero, then the deformation form a torsor under H one X So. Uh, okay, I have a question about the first thing. So, what is SPF uh, about? Uh, the formal spectrum of a ring. It's I uh, Archon chapter <laughs> section A. Yeah, like it's yeah, it's uh, it's uh, the, it's. I will say I will describe it as an object that is in the middle. Between the spec, so this is an object that is between in the middle between a complex variety, like not algebraic variety, and um, a, well, it's C, it's C, and uh, an algebraic variety in some sense. But I have no, uh, I, I cannot go there into. So it's it's something that behave like uh, like in some way it's behave like a scheme under many aspects, but it's not a scheme. So, so this is not a scheme. Here, in this case, it's, it's nothing else than the limit over the specs of the Rn. Yes, yes. So, yes. A limit over C. So here is the, the obstruction here is Tx over. Yeah. Ah, sorry. I didn't... What? Yeah. Oh. Yes, the tangent. Yes. So I don't know using green on a green board is useful, so let's try with this. So keep in mind this is important because if this vanish, if this is zero, then you know that you can always lift. And this also is important because it tells you how many deformation you have. It's important, like if you if you have seen 
infinitesimal deformation theory in your life over Artemian K algebras, there is a fundamental difference today. There is no zero deformation. So the, the, taking the fiber product does not give you a deformation in this setting, which means that the deformation, the space of deformation has no special zero point. So I have to show up at the end, so you start with the date of I. But, yeah, but it's a little bit tensorized. Yes, it's tensorized. Yeah. Oh. So, Sorry, it was just pointed out here that, that there might be confusion in notation because the, um, the, the like, uh, central fiber was called X and now X is over A. Oh, yes. I, what you I forget. <laughs> Yeah, and then this X is the origin. Yes, and X is the one over K. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. So, these are the two important things. And what I want to stress is because uh, it's a trap in which I fall when I was young and inexperienced, there is no zero point. So, unless the situation is particular, there is no special. Deformation, zero deformation that you can uh, choose as preferred or as giving you a starting point. So, so this is why it's a torsor. So there is not, not a given uh, rational point. It could be empty in particular. Yes, empty. it could be empty. So this is uh, one of the things. And, uh, and then uh, it could be empty. And uh, the other thing is even when it's not empty, you, it's not that a vector here gives you a particular direction in the forming. Like a vector here gives you a particular direction up to translating by, by anything. So it's a, it's, it's a kind of, you cannot distinguish. There is no preferred point. That is because they are taking any square zero tension rather than true square zero. Yeah. yeah. If it's true square zero, it's something you have. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. So then, okay, but with that, you just get a formal. And then you want to algebraize. And then here you got used uh, Rothenick. Uh, algebraization theorem, so existence theorem. So you can deform. So if you can, you, so you can get a scheme. Sorry, you can get a scheme if uh, you can at every step of your deformation, you can bring with you an ample line bundle. Let's write it like that. Yeah. Um, algebra. Oh yeah, sorry. Here? Yeah. Yes. It is fine if I cover the other one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you can get an algebraic deformation if you can, let's say, marry with u at each step. And ample line bundle. So basically what you get, you get L ample at, the, at each step, you get L and a line bundle over xn such so that uh, ln restricted to uh, to x is just n. So, so this is uh, you can get an algebraic deformation. Exactly. So now the obstruction of doing that that lies in h1. X or X. 
yeah, H2 enzymes, right? It's an absorption, so it's nice in H2 enzymes. Okay, so this is the other thing that uh, the other cohomology group that is of interest for us. And now I'm going to give you a list of things that are known to perform together with the H2 assumption and the H2 of OS. And, uh, and uh, it enables the people who manage to work out the things they form it anyway, in a nice way, even if uh, the cohomology was not being a friend. So algebraic unit in the projective over. Yeah, well, yes. So not just formal, but spec R and projective. Yes, over. yes, exactly. Okay, so. So was a sigma x ray? Yeah. This sheet, what was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Okay, so first thing that lift one. So this is things that lift one. A linear variety. So, well, the tangent of an abelian variety, as you, I hope the student of my PhD classes on abelian variety know, is uh, uh, the sum of OX to the G. G is the dimension of X. And so, in particular, we have the H2 of X, or the tangent of X, is different from zero. Not good. However, they, they have a formal lift by an unpublished result of Grothendieck. <laughs> And they have projective lift lift by the work of another giant, of course, other two giants. Like mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Is it enough? Yes. Okay, so two. Oh, sorry. Three surfaces. Well, why does it work? The structure on path of zero, or why does it work? I didn't check, like, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I think I, I don't know anything about that. And uh, I think once you have the formal lift, uh, uh, then it, so also H H two of X O X is highly non-zero in for a linear variety, but uh, I think they work out that. Uh, um, well, here it's important. Uh, you have like. You have to pay something. So if you want an algebraic lift, if you put the question on the word, so you have to pay, you cannot expect that the algebraic lift is all over the bit vector, is uh, over a ramified extension. So you pay the lift of a line bundle. By taking one five and 
So what I think is happening is that the obstruction is not necessarily zero over the weak vector, but if you take a ramified extension of the weak vector, then it's vanishes, and so you're fine. Yes, sir. Uh, the same like here means that uh, uh, lifts from capital P to capital zero or means lifts. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, so uh, okay, means that a bit right lifts from capital. Yes, they leave to characteristic P to characteristic zero. If you want the big vector as phase of the lifting, the, it's not like you might not have a, 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 an algebraic lift, but if you pay by taking um, 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 if you pay by taking a extension of uh, a, of the of the bit vector, then you can lift like an ampullae bundle along, and so you have a full vector. I see. But does it also that do also mean that it lifts if you fix a characteristic, it can also lift like any yes, you can lift it, but the, the thing is you don't know uh -huh. how you can lift. Like as again, like if there is no preferred lift, there will be for some special abelian variety. This is with the the last part of the talk. There will be and uh, there will be for some special, so let's write it here because it will be important in the future, but uh, some special, actually more than the generic, but uh, the ordinary, what I call ordinary opinion variety, uh, have Special lift. That is it, called canonical lifting, which like if you have uh, you, you start with an ordinary abelian variety, then you you have a preferred deformation. Two K three surfaces. So good news. The lift to you have a formal lift, you have many formal lifts, and but then values line bundle are obstructed, and so but anyway, another giant solve the problem for us again, paying the price. For taking the ramified extension, you can uh, bring uh, if we Pay the price of taking a ramified, a ramified extension of WK, we have an algebraic lift. This is just for K3. It's only for K3. Yes. And then three Enrique surfaces. So <coughs> they I will drop the computing of the tandem because uh, if we're going characteristic two, it becomes we have three different possible uh, value of the tangent. So, but anyway, so it's the Enrique surface. They <coughs> lift to uh, characteristic uh, 
zero. Uh, algebraically, so actually it's so in characteristic different from it's the characteristic is different from two, then we have is zero, and which will be important. Something that I will use in the last lecture. So if the characteristic is different from two, then this is zero. So once you have a formal lift, then you have a projective lift. But this is not true if characteristic is uh, is two. If the characteristic of the base field is two, it's uh, it's not clear. Like it, it's not true. But like it is clear because of the work of Lipke. So if the characteristic of the base field is two, then it can happen that a two of x or x is k. Uh, it's k. A two of x or x is k. And, uh, and then the work of Litke they lift positively by paying The price of a ramified. Uh, of WK. And then the last one for by by lipid surface. Uh, lift to characteristic P by uh, the pieces of hash. So, and like there are other examples, like also there are uh, examples of things that do not lift. There are examples of things that do not lift to W2. Like when you try to do the deformation, like if they don't lift to W uh, K over uh, M over M three. So there are examples of things that do not lift to this. So there are examples of things that do not lift, but these things are uh, lift. And then. Example, Calabria Crifo was it next? From Calabria Crifo, and then there are some surfaces that uh, they don't, uh, if the Kodaira vanishing does not work. And then, uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Something strange is uh, the IT the Yes, yes. So it's lifting is now <coughs> a birational invariant. One question is it a derived invariant? So if one thing lifts, does the other, like, does, and there is a Fourier Mukaibane, does the other things lift? And uh, so, okay, so let's see, special lift of ordinary variety. Sorry, you said that that question is still open? Yes, yes. What about a high dimension? For example, here we're speaking two points of 
Okay. Maybe take a hip of steam of 2.3. This kind of lifting problem. I would not know that, but that is a modular space. So I would think that uh, by being careful, things lift. Because, like, it's. And the reason why is because, like, the way in which uh, we solve the product of the elliptic curve is really by using that Fourier Mukai marker or moduli space. And if you lift one thing, you can lift the moduli space. If you're careful, like, uh, you're careful. But I would think that with spoil, you have no problem. So. Okay, so special lift of ordinary thing. I mean, couldn't I just lift the K3 surface and then yes. take the, the relative elements? Yes, yeah, so one has to be slightly careful. Well, in, in general, like I think with Hilbert scheme there is no problem. I never read it. But when one does something like that, one has to be uh, slightly careful by, like, uh, if you lift the, the polarization. Because, for example, if you lift a K3 and you have a modular space of vector bundle that you want to lift, uh, well, it's stable with respect to a polarization, so you have to lift that polarization. And then you have to make sure that, like, in, in there are some, some Fine problem that you you have to deal with, but uh, I would say that the gut feeling Hilbert scheme of point has no problem. Okay, special lift. Uh, in five minutes. <laughs> okay, so I will skip. Everything about the absolute Brouwer group and uh, the enlarged Brouwer group of uh, K3 surface. The, the thing is, so if, suppose that, uh, well, X and a million, a million variety or a K3 surface, we say that uh, N to the, man, the dimension of x, we say that x is ordinary, one of the definition of ordinary, but it's the one that is common. And well, you have a, in Karate CP, you have the Frobenius morphism, and uh, x, O oh, x, and uh, x, O oh, x is an Okay, so for ordinary things, we have special lift. So for Nigar, show that uh, if x is k3 and ordinary. Oh, sorry. Yes, I should cook myself. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so if x is ordinary, then uh, then there is a canonical lift. Uh, To, uh, to the lift, the lift vector, which is algebraizable, right, which is projective. So what, really roughly, to x, one associate to rigid uh, formal groups, like that is uh, uh, um, uh, what is uh, it useful f um, so there is a way of producing from x to rigid object that do not uh, 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 to rigid of to rigid groups and so basically if you have there is a way to associate from a lift 
uh, annexed of these two things. So this is called, this is the absolute Brouwer group and uh, this is uh, basically, this is uh, the kernel of the map from the absolute Brouwer group into the large Brouwer group. And so there is a way to, for any projective lift, you can associate an extension of these two objects. And then, well, here you have a particular element, zero. So the canonical lift is a zero, it's a, it's a lift corresponding to a dissension, and Niga shows that it's projective even more. You have then every line bundle lift to the canonical lift. So it's uh, and then a billion varieties. It's in, a, in an appendix. By uh, So if you have, I will take the theorem X smooth projective of the <laughs> Subjective, so it's an isomorphism. And B, every F from X1 to X2 isomorphism uh, lifts to an isomorphism to X1 or X2. And since this is unique with this property, then we call this a canonical lift. So you, you, for a video variety which are ordinary, you have also a very special lift. And so when you, this is the reason why when you consider ordinary video variety, then by using the canonical lift, you can almost think about them as 
complex abelian variety in, uh, in the complex setting. And the same thing is for uh, uh, canonical leaf of K3. Like, it's, uh, if you want to prove something for ordinary K3s, well, if you can prove it for the canonical leaf, then there is a big chance that uh, you're able to, to make it work also for, uh, for uh, the, the the assumption of omega x is trivial. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. Yes. Apart from abelian varieties, what are examples? Probably. Uh, yeah, because you cannot, for example, you cannot have the blow up here because uh, otherwise it's not trivial anymore. So. Well, in characteristic zero, that's characterized the right? Yeah, yes. In characteristic B, it's not. No, I think, uh, I think some bilitic surface in characteristic geometry might have it, but uh, I will not uh, uh, put my, my hand. But, uh, yeah. So this is characteristic independent of characteristic? Yeah, so this is in characteristic B. So yeah, no, yes, it, it, there is no um, there is no restriction to to Yes. Okay, so I will stop here, and um, next time, like remember, like we are going to use the canonical lift of abelian varieties in order to. Uh, to study Fourier Mukai partner of a lifting of product of a lifting curve. Uh, so for uh, so basically this will allow to study out the product when uh, um, when the two elliptic curves are ordinary and then when uh, uh, actually the one ordinary and one super singular is uh, as easy as that and the problem is uh, when both of them are super singular because we cannot use it at all. So, questions? Can you maybe explain a bit more this notion of ordinary? So, like, wh why is it called ordinary? Is it something that we're supposed to expect to hold? Well, it's gen it's general. Yes, it's uh, it's old in general. So, so to to give you an idea for abelian surfaces, so ordinary. Well, so for elliptic curve, you have just ordinary and super singular. And super singular are finitely many. Okay? So there are just a finitely many J invariants that, uh, for, for each characteristic, there are finitely many J invariants that give you a super singular elliptic curve. Then for, so this is, um, then, then you go to abelian surface. Then ordinary, like the simple ones are ordinary. So this means that the generic is ordinary. Product of two ordinary elliptic curves are ordinary. And then you have a stratification because then you have one, uh, one elliptic curve, one ordinary and one not. But you see they are not yet finitely many. And then you have the super singular, which are just product of super singular elliptic curves. This is failed in dimension three because in dimension three you can have simple abelian, some simple abelian varieties that are super singular or not ordinary. But uh, the, if you if you pick your random one, it's going to be ordinary. And random here means for the Minkowski open in the ordinary space, or is it is it not? Random? For abelian surfaces, uh, there is the open. I wonder if for K3 surfaces, uh, very general, instead of general, it's uh, very general. So super singular is never ordinary. Super singular is never So basically, it's, um, for abelian variety, ordinary and super singular are the two, they, they give you your spectrum. So the super singular are the most special one. And also for K3 surfaces, like the super, like you have for K3 surfaces, you have hate one that are ordinary, uh, finite hate, 
that are not ordinary or not super singular, and then you have the super singular that give you the other, the other uh, edge of the spectrum. So yeah, so ordinary and super singular are give you the the two boundary which you can span behavior. Any other questions? What makes up here?